Hey, thanks for being here. It's been two years. It's been two years. Yeah, good. I'm excited. <clears throat> so uh, this is the only talk that I have this weekend that I'm nervous about the time. So I'm going to roll and try to get through this because the, the State of the Union, there's a, it's the State of the Union. We want to talk about where we are, uh, kind of where we've been and where we're going. And so to stay on schedule, we're going to roll. So let's do it. I would start it. 2016, 2017, it was awesome, right? Crushed it. <laughs> Two years ago. Not a good year. Not a good year for us. Uh, dumpster fire, actually, in fact. This is where we are today. Thank you. We're crushing it. We're crushing it. And it took a while to get back there. Okay, that's where we're going. Papa Elon to the mother effing moon. That's where we're going. Serious, I mean, so excited about where it's going, right? Okay, so one of the things I thought that would be fun is to talk a little bit, next slide. <clears throat> we were together two years ago, almost to the day in Wichita Falls, Texas, where we reserved the brewery for four hours, and now here we are two years later, running out a hotel convention center, running out gyms, running out super nice, uh, Michelin starred chefs. We've come a long way. I thought it would be really fun to look at where we are today versus where we were two years ago. And so uh, this is the one that's going to get me. Two years ago, this is my first slide. Some of you remember this. Some of you don't because you're new. But this is the first slide two years ago when we were together. And the door opened, and we ran through it. And it wasn't easy. You know, on the other side of the door, there was a ton of shit we had to get through. But we got through it. And so I want to spend some time talking through where we've come. OK, next slide. So July 2019 versus July 2021. So this is through the end of July. I thought it'd be really fun to just take a few minutes and show you some insane metrics of where we are and where we've been. So. Number of clients served, total clients served by July 2019 was 2,360 clients we had served. Now we have served 4,298 clients. Next one. Active online coaching clients. Then we had 897 on the way down to a low of 640 at the end of 2019. So there's the real stats number for you. Man, that was hard. That's a big loss in clients. Today, 1,002. And this is online coaching clients. It doesn't count academy, it doesn't count students, right? Staff, this is an interesting stat. 75 staff members back then, 66 contractors, nine employees. Staff today, and I'm actually proud of this, 71. It's actually gone down by four. Less contractors. The pay per contractor has gone up over $600 per contractor. And now we have 19 employees. We have a huge staff, a huge uh, leadership team that runs all of the like wheels and moving parts behind the scenes. And we're gonna get into that a little bit as well today. Academy students, July 2019, 224. Today, 479. Most of these are, you'll start to look at it and you'll see this trend that we've basically doubled in the last two years, the number of people that we've served. PBCs, July 2019, zero. PBCs today, 50. Almost everybody in this room is one, and the ones that aren't are really, really close, and you're almost there. Churn, this is an incredible number. So let me, real fast, I'll explain churn. Churn is how, what percentage of clients we lose every single month that then must be replaced with new clients. 6.6% .6 is a healthy churn for fitness industry, month by month, auto payments. That was healthy. But for us, that, mean, that meant that the lifetime value of the customer was whatever that extrapolates out to be 20 months, somewhere in there, right? Less even. Now, churn, 2.1%. That is literally unheard of on the internet in any industry, right? That is the number that you get when you are enterprise software that, that, that is a SaaS software that, that your primary client is a major business corporation that takes a year for them. Like you put in Salesforce, and you spend $10 million to put in Salesforce, 
So it's like ruins your business if you get rid of it. That's what their churn is. What do you think? I mean, what's churn at gyms where people work out at a gym? Way higher than this. So this is an incredible churn number. And that is so much of that has to do with you and the service you provide, the experience team constantly thinking about how do we serve our clients better? So I'm super proud of that churn number, right? Workouts broken down. This is amazing. In 2019, we had broken down 251,000 workouts. Today, 543,000 workouts we've broken down on True Coach or now the Block app. 543,000, right? Exercises broken down. 680,000 in 2019. Today, almost 1.5 million exercises have broken down. I feel like I've carried at least 10% of those myself. Now, I don't know. I'm sure you all do. Um, that's a, it's a lot of exercises we break down. So again, the volume of, of exercise that we can break down, the volume of clients that we can serve is really incredible. Let's talk about content for a second. Content. 2019, we had done how many articles? 128. As of today, 293 articles we've put out. I wish he was here. He'll be here in about an hour. He's going to miss us by a little bit. Nick Solin. How many has Nick Solin written? Anybody, any guesses? 84 in 2019, and that's 65% of all our articles today, 159 articles that guy's written. But here is an awesome number, 45%, more and more of you are writing our articles. Back then, he wrote more than half of our articles. Now, he writes significantly less than half of our articles, right? So that's a ton of articles that we put out. We have a comprehensive content library that I'm super proud of at this point, and that uh, content team has been awesome there. YouTube videos. 89 in July of 2019, a lot of you come, have come to my house and shot those videos or come to the strength parlor and done those. Now, 194 published YouTube videos for us. YouTube subscribers, 21,000 two years ago. Now, 45. YouTube views, 1.8 million. Today, 4.9 million. We're about to cross over the 5 million view mark. YouTube watch time, this is insane. 12.1 million minutes today. 24 million minutes, that's 45 plus years of watch time on our YouTube channel. It's insanity. Podcast, 211, whew. now 495. I don't have much more to talk about, kiddos. <laughs> Man, when you're the subject matter expert, you start to run out of stuff, right? I don't, like, I don't care how much you know about any subject, you're like, uh. So, and that's been a real blessing to me as well. So many of you have stepped up and filled in. We've got other subject matter experts here who are great in places that I'm not. And so to have more and more of you step up and be able to contribute to the podcast has been really, really nice for us. Podcast downloads two years ago, 1.5 million. Today, 3.87 million podcast downloads. Website sessions, 330,000. Today, 1.5 million. Email subscribers, this is huge because we own this, right? We can't get deplatformed on our own email subscriber list. 4,000 then, today, just over 10,000. And our open rate is unbelievable for an email subscriber list. It's very high. We've got high engagement on our email subscriber list or from our email subscribers. Lots and lots of, as a matter of fact, a couple months ago, we were looking at the marketing report. What was it, 17%, I think? 17, not would have been 27%, somewhere in there. Of all of our client signups came directly from the email subscribers, from, from that list, so it's pretty big. Uh, and the Instagram followers, 12,019, and today, pushing almost 20,000, 19.1. So this is, we have come a long way in the last two years. Okay. So what's going on behind the scenes? One of the things I wanna spend some time doing today is talk about most of you, many of you probably don't know all the work that gets done behind the scenes and I wanna be able to take a few minutes and brag about my team. And so I'm gonna walk through what that looks. By the way, those are two fatter versions of us. So <laughs> thank God we got some new pictures coming up today. Let's get some new headshots. By the way, if you did not sign up for a headshot, you're missing out, you, and you're not gonna hear it. I'm gonna, real quick, we are redesigning the bio pages, and they're freaking awesome. You're gonna see one from Cam, because we Cam, when he talks later on today, he's gonna show you what it looks like. So if you didn't sign up for a headshot today, there's still time to do that. You should do it if, you, if you're not doing it. It's worth the 30 bucks to get an amazing headshot from an amazing photographer. This is our amazing team. I know you probably can't see all these things, but I just kinda wanna, mostly, I just want you to almost be overwhelmed by the number of people that are on this. These are employees. These are people that work for us. This is the operations team over here on the far left. Andrew leads that. We're talking about leading the um, online coaching um, excellence, nutrition coaching excellence led by Jillian, right? 
academy led by CJ and Becca as curriculum de uh, de bloop, developer. And then now Andrew is also leading the product team, like the product development team of the new software. That is a ton of stuff going on over there in operations. Experience team is the next vertical line there led by Nikki Sims, Nikki Berman, Stacy, and Brooke. It's all been a tremendous job. And their job, that combined experience team, is to make sure that they focus on your experience as our coaches and staff so that we actually consider you clients and also our actual paying customers clients. We wanna make sure that both experiences are outstanding. The next line is this insane group of people that put on marketing, growth, branding, um, content, and that you've led by Josh Veach, is, who is awesome. If you see all these like wonderfully designed branding pages, that's Josh and Paige back here. Paige is taking pictures for us on our marketing team. Ness doing all of our social media. She does an outstanding job there. Nick Solin as editor-in-chief, again, writing all the articles or editing articles, and not just the amount of stuff that Nick and now Noah, who's also Noah Hayden, who's also an editor for us, the stuff that they edit that you don't even ever see that are internal documents, that are legal documents, that are corporate documents, it's, it's vast. Dan is the content administrator. He's killed it, by the way. Dan has been the event coordinator for this weekend. He has crushed it. I'd love to give him a, he has killed it. Now, we might fall flat on our face in the next 24 hours and we'll take back the applause, but at least for now, it's been really good. Super organized and, and I'm not stressed at all about this stuff. And this, this incredible uh, group of, of content producers and creators, guys like Nate, who's on the camera right now, is one of our post-production guys. Sam is here uh, this weekend. He's our, vid our primary videographer. We have Seth, who's another post-production video guy. We've got Steven, who does our podcast uh, production. We have an incredible team that does this stuff. So, all right, next. So what, we've what have we accomplished and where have we struggled? I wanna talk through some of those things and then how we got there, okay. So this is our mission. This is our mission statement and our vision. Our mission is that we're professional strength and conditioning coaches, professionals. Andrew's gonna talk about this. I know that a bunch of you are sitting out in the audience right now and you're like, I am not the most expert strength coach in the world. And you're not but you're on your way. Being an expert strength coach takes years and often decades, but you can be professional from the day you earn that PBC. You can be professional before you earn the PBC. This is the most professional coaching organization in the world, and we can pride ourselves in that, so that if you are a young coach, a younger coach, and you're a, somebody who's getting better and better by the day, you are still absolutely a professional coach, even in the process of trying to gain that expertise, right? We're professional strength and conditioning coach, strength coaches and nutrition coaches, giving the world access to personal coaching, educational resources, and opportunities to help others improve their quality of life through strength. That's what it's all about for us, quality of life. Our vision there is that we create connections for the world to experience a life improved by strength. We wanna be the company who doesn't just coach you incredibly well, but that everybody else looks like, this is what this weekend is all about. Everybody comes and goes, oh my God, the service is incredible. I want my staff to say that about the leadership team. They took care of me, they care about me, they care about my life, they care about how much money I'm making, they care about me being able to support my family. I want your clients to say the same thing about you. That's who we are as a, as a company. And I think we've, we've really, we're never gonna be satisfied here, but this is who we are, right? Okay. Real talk, we're redefining personal training. Uh, we're not trying to get rid of personal training. A lot of you are coaching in person, we want that. I want Cody's gym to crush it in St. Louis. I want Jordan's gym to crush it in Portland. The reality is, it's like how many people can you actually hold if your gym killed it? What can you do, 150 clients, 200 clients? I mean, that's, that's all you can do and you're done. Like, that's, you can't do it. And how many people don't ever have access to a professional strength coach? The vast majority, I mean, six billion people don't have access to a good coach. Now they do. So we're not trying to get rid of your ability to coach people in person. We wanna support that all we can. We recognize how many people can you coach? How about just on a personal level? How many people can you coach one-on-one? -on -one? 10, 12, 13, 20 max? Coaching 20 people, like personal training, is that, that's a killer. Some of you have done that before, that's a whole bunch of people. How many can you do online? More. We got people who do 50, and they're doing it an hour and a half a day, right? Okay. So these are our teams and the goals they help us achieve. Next. Our experience and operations team help us serve our clients and staff, right? That's primary, the, the way we serve is our experience team. 
But the way it integrates with operations and coaching excellence and nutrition excellence and what Jillian leads with the nutrition team and the academy excellence, those things come together. There's no way to separate those and have them be completely autonomous. They, that operations for us, because we are a service business, overlaps tremendously with our experience team. And so that's what we do. I don't have any of my notes, but I'm gonna, I'll do the best I can. So all my presentation notes I can't see right here. So I'll just, I've done this a few times, so I'll shoot from the cuff. Uh, our goal in the experience team, one of the big things that Nikki's brought forth, she'll talk about this this weekend, is to make sure that we focus on and recognize the milestones that our staff and our clients are going through. And that means the, the peaks and the valleys. Like when they get married, when they have a job change, when they buy a house, these are big deals. And they set big PRs. And they set any PR, we recognize. But we also recognize that when they get divorced, when their dog dies, when they lose their job, when somebody gets COVID, when somebody gets sick, our job is to recognize that. We don't just strength coach. We build the relationships there to continue to make improvement with the experience of our clients and our staff, right? Beyond that, another place where the operations and the experience team have really come together is in the block app. The amount of work we've done to make sure that the experience, and we're not there yet, that it's practically awesome, but it's not beautiful yet, and there's work to be done, design things that we have to do so far, and, and we've got lots of still fixes and things, but our job is Andrew works, the operations team, the dev team works with the experience team to try to make sure that we are removing tech, we're removing roadblocks in the technology world so that the experience on the app is as flawless as possible, right? They've done an incredible job of making sure that you know what your job is, what responsibilities and expectations are for anybody that works in our company, what our clients are there to expect, what the on-ramp process looks like, what the off-ramp process looks like, all that stuff is there, okay. Our growth team helps us grow our company. This is a picture, by the way, of the old Strong Gym right up the road here in Springfield, Missouri. 10 years ago, actually, yeah, just slightly more than 10 years ago, that was the business that I owned, right? It, the rent in that gym was $700 a month. $700 a month. Breakfast this morning cost me more than that, right? I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. We would never be standing here today if it weren't for that gym, if it weren't for that process of learning how to run business. I was not a great leader then. I was not a great boss. I didn't do, I've learned so much from those experiences, but we have grown and grown. Of course, that's not the same company that it is now, but in my mind, I just watch it slowly transition from this little baby gym that was in an industrial building in Springfield, Missouri, to what we built today. So our growth team helps us grow our company. And that is, again, you're talking about the growth team with Josh and marketing and branding and social media and Colin at, where is Colin? He's somewhere in here. So, okay, just, okay, Colin at um, external relations. So he basically builds relationships with important individuals, with corporations, with uh, the military. So he does all that stuff as well. Um, it's an incredible team. Content works as part of that too, helps support that growth. And so we're constantly trying to grow because we want to give you more clients if you want more clients and we wanna get better and better, okay. Our content and academy teams help us teach our community. Again, we've got a huge content library, comprehensive content library at this point with articles, eBooks, YouTube videos, and podcasts, a tremendous amount of internal content as well, and an incredible team to push that. And then, man, the academy, CJ, you guys have killed it this year. We now have an online learning environment. It's completely automated. It's one of the most profitable, it is the most profitable product we have in the business. And we are helping turn other people, often clients. There are people who are gonna be sitting out there today who will be in here tomorrow, who will be here on the staff day next year because of what you're doing in the academy. That's cool, right? Um, so we have the opportunity to help teach people and help them learn how to become professional coaches. And I'm very thankful for the Academy team doing that. For Becca at Curriculum Director as well, Carl has contributed tremendously. I'm super thankful for that. And we'll continue to do it. We're not a content company. There are lots of companies, where they make money off their content. We're a service company, we serve people. The content is free. That's what builds the trust. That's the pre-trust that gets built among the community that gives us the street cred so that some percentage of those people who consume our content will eventually become our clients. Those people will eventually take the academy. Those people will eventually become PBCs, and some of those people will eventually work for us. That's the client life cycle. We can continue to see it. We didn't even plan it that way at first. It just, we started to see that's the way it works, right? There's a lot of you in this room that are exactly that. 
you started as a client for Barbell Logic, and then you went through the process of the academy, ended up earning your PBC, you were an associate coach, and now you're a, a full PBC coach that works for us doing professional coaching. Okay. Our operations team helps us steward and manage our resources. So we don't talk a lot about this behind the scenes, but we're co constantly working behind the scenes for are we utilizing our resources correctly? And, and yes, we're talking about money and budgets and the way that we actually handle those things, that we steward them well, that we're not out spending money frivolously and that we're protecting the resources that we have. COVID really made that. We were in a strong position because we had protected those resources. So when COVID hit and we had 70 people go on freeze because they lost access to their gym, we didn't die. And we continued to thrive throughout COVID. And 2020 was a good year for us. 2021 has been even better. We are constantly working behind the scenes to make sure that we shepherd those resources well, but not just, not just actual capital. We do the same thing with human capital. You are important to us, and we want to make sure we shepherd that well, right? When you've got a company that's a service company that's built on experts, then you have to make sure you shepherd the experts well. You guys are great at your job. How do we make sure that you don't get crushed with what we're trying to do? That's the kind of stuff that goes on. And then, oh my God, the amount of work that gets done by mission control is Josh and Nikki and Andrew and me just doing strategic planning for the future, presenting that to the staff and the, the, uh, the rest of the employees and leadership team. And then just the work behind the scenes that guys like Andrew does on, Andrew is like the spreadsheet king, man. That guy is, it's, I, I think he's got a little bit, he gets turned on by spreadsheets a little bit. I'm just going to, it's, uh, I've never seen it. But he's great at it, and he puts these incredible things together for us, and he does such a wonderful job in operations. I'm, I'm thankful for it. Okay. So the question is, how do we manage this stuff? I'm sweating now, and I don't feel like I'm nervous or anything. Yeah. So how many of you guys have heard, of it, heard about this, the game plan? How many of you know what this is? The actual, well, yes, if you're an employee, you have. And so... Okay, so much of you guys don't know what this is. Okay, so there's a lot of moving parts. How do we manage the moving parts? Now, I have invented nothing in my life. I steal stuff. I beg, borrow, steal. That's the way it works. But we did develop this system, which is a system that's been put together from other corporate systems that works, and it's perfect for us. It's been outstanding. The game plan system stands for goals, actions, metrics, and execution. I get it. It sounds very corporate-y. Like, what does that mean? Let me walk you through it really quick because I want you to know how we manage this stuff. There are so many moving parts and we're a well-oiled machine and how do we make sure we continue to keep it that way? Okay. So this is the monthly plan. If you can't read it all, it's okay. I'll explain real quick. So it goes one, two, three, four, right? So again, we develop, Mission Control develops a game plan for the company, which is the yearly goals. We have like three or plus big company goals three to four actions to meet those goals that are like literally, did you do it, yes or no? Were you able to complete this action that helped led to the goal? The metrics that are attached to those actions and goals to measure like, is it actually working? And then an execution plan to say, who's actually gonna carry it out? How do we make sure that you know, one person isn't trying to do nine things at once? We never do that, Josh. We never make one person do nine things at once. Definitely not Josh Beach, who does nine things at once in a morning before breakfast. And so, but we do the best we can. Okay, so the way this works on a monthly schedule, stuff that you don't ever see. Number one, the company game plan vision, the second week of the previous month. So what will basically be next week for us in August, mission control meets and we talk about September. Where are we going in September? What are the big things we're trying to accomplish in September? Where, what are, what's the vision? Where are we going? And we come together on that and we're all, and we go and most of the time it's all together and sometimes it's pushing and shoving a little bit. Let's talk, let's do this one. Let's not push too much out too early, which is what I always wanna do is like, let's do all of them at once. And we get that ready. In the third week of the previous month, so meaning the third week of August, we then communicate that company game plan to, the, to what we call an all hands meeting. All employees at Barbell Logic, then here, here's where we're going. If you're an employee at Barbell Logic, you're part of, you're on one of our teams. So then you can hear, Here's the vision for, from the leadership on where the company is going in September on the third week of August. So we've got a little time to plan. In the fourth week of the month, the last week of the month, that team gets together and they meet doing one-on-ones and meet together as a team and they develop their individual game plan for the next month. Here's the academy game plan for September. Here's the content game plan for September. Here's the experience game plan for September. Here's external relations for September. Here's marketing for September. 
make, get those all put together and make sure that everything is perfect. And each one of them, they've got two to three goals. They've got three to four actions that they have to complete that month to get to that goal. And here are the metrics that they're gonna use to measure it to make sure it works. And then the first week of the month, the first week of what will be September, the leadership team, the head of each of those teams, we do a call together. I, Andrew leads it, I turn my mic off, I turn my camera off, I listen and take notes. And that leadership team reports back to us, back to me and the leadership. Here's what my team is going to do that's in line with the company game plan. And that's how it works. So that we're constantly looking at it at a month by month basis, at a quarter by quarter basis, and at a year by year basis to make sure that we get the right stuff done and that all the parts are moving. And the execution piece of this is the piece where we make sure that the teams can work together. There's a lot of cross categorical work that has to occur at this point. Academy needs content to help, to help them complete things. Everybody needs marketing and branding to help it make it look nice. Everything we put out looks incredible. We can't put stuff out that looks like crap even internally now. We've set a standard that goes, this is what we do. So, you know, it's, so Paige and Josh, they're just constantly like churning out this like beautiful branded stuff for us to make sure it gets done. How do we make sure that we can actually get all the things prioritized so we can get it all done? Okay, so that's how the game plan works. Next. So where do we go from here? Well, what's awesome about this is I'm gonna make you wait because that's what this whole weekend is about, is to talk about where we go from here. Every single talk today is about where we go from here. Every single talk tomorrow is about how we're trying to serve the client and the coach and where we go from here. And then Sunday, I'll actually cast some vision at progress, big picture stuff about where we're really going in the next two to three years. And so I'm excited for where we're going. I'm excited for where we've been. Man, it was a tough couple years. Uh, it was a much longer valley than I thought we'd be in. We hit the bottom relatively early at the end of 2019 and started our climb out in 2020 and we've just been going like this. And then it really was just the last few months that we really truly passed what the numbers were back before 2019. And so we've gotten there so much of that. I'm so thankful for you all being a part of that. You are all such an integral part of the team. I will never take for granted the staff that's here. Again, the reason I get choked up is because I look out over the room and I see what incredible people are here. And I go, I cannot believe that this group of people works for us. We don't think of it that way, right? The only person that's allowed to call me boss in the entire, in, in the entire company is Harry because he calls me Hefe, and that's way cooler. And then I get to feel like I'm a drug kingpin or something, but <laughs> otherwise, I don't want to be the boss, right? We, really, it's a very egalitarian way we run the company, right? Now, we've got the organization that's all set, but we understand the value of every single person in this company, all the way down to the intern, to the associate coach, the low man on the totem pole. They're there for a reason, and they're there because they help our company succeed. And so thank you so much for who you are. Thank you working for, Barba, for working for Barbell Logic. And I'm super excited about what is to come this weekend. So thank you. Look at that. Look at that. Nailed it. No notes. And I nailed my time. It's a good start.